Lord. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I know as human beings, Jesus, a lot of times probably some of the main things you're talking around in your home, in your neighborhoods, in the stores is Corona, Corona, Corona. Yeah. But you know, God's people always learned when they were in the worst times in history, that's when my God showed up. Amen. When they got to the Red Sea, God just got ready to show his stuff. Amen. Well, we need to look at this not like, oh, well, we got to just hang in there for another month. What if the church decided to thrive and we said, God, throw out revival right now?
praise the Lord. That's our prayer. Glory. That the Holy Ghost will reign down on us. Amen. We need a moving of God's Spirit in our lives. Yes, sir. Can everybody say amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We welcome you Hallelujah. again this morning to church. And, uh, I don't know about you, but I know here at 5408 Civil Court, we're feeling the presence of yes. Almighty God in this place. Oh. My, we're starting thank to just feel you. God's touch upon us. And we thank the Lord for that. Make your home, church. Yes. Amen. Make it a house of worship. Yes. Amen. A house, a house of, of prayer and a house Amen. of praise. Amen. So we want to just encourage you and admonish you to keep yes. on. Just worshiping like you are. I'm going to right. treat everybody like we're having church and I'm, I'm standing there at the pulpit and we're That's preaching it. to a large audience. We have, you know, our nine or so and we're here right now in this house. But I, I also realize that many of you have been watching. Many of you are already tuned in and are watching. Yeah. So we want you to turn your your home into a place of worship. Because we need this. We really need this. Come on. And I don't know about you, but I need this. And yes, dealing man. with everything that's going on and the way Hallelujah. all the, the way the world is acting, we definitely need a man a good worship yes. a time of worship. Praise yes. the Lord. Amen. Uh, we want to uh, go to the Lord in Amen. prayer, and uh, we want to ask God to touch and to heal all those that are sick. Yes, thank Listen, you. folks. There's not only those that are you know oh, having Corona no. virus. But there's other people that are very sick yes, with other conditions, right. yeah, mm -hmm. even it. to where they're in some places like New York, they're bringing in the um, the hospitals and a ship yes, because yes, right. uh, they have to have a safe place for people who are, have other conditions uh, to be taken right. care of right. without the risk of getting infected. And so we want to pray for all yes, those Lord. that are, are sick and, and especially those that are having the flu bugs and yeah. this coronavirus. <laughs> That God will touch them and strengthen them. Amen. Praise God. I do have a praise report. Uh, Brother Chris uh, Black, Pastor Chris Black from Freeport, Florida. Uh, we have had prayer for him previously about his, uh, he was working and his, <clears throat> took a step and his, his thigh bone, his femur just broke on, right. on him. Yes. And uh, when they further begin to do studies and tests on what happened, x-rays and scans, they realized that he had bone cancer and that weakened that bone and that's why it broke. So he's had to have surgeries right. and they've done all this uh, to him. Right. But I was just speaking with him late uh, uh, a couple of days ago and uh, just lately here and he told me that his last doctor visit, he's had some chemotherapy treatments and uh, things specifically for that kind of cancer. and. Uh, so thankful to, to report that he said that they checked now and that his bone is healing up. There is no signs of any kind of weakness. <laughs> and they're saying, we don't see here in your blood work any cancer. It looks like the Lord has healed him. And so he's already walking using a cane. He said uh, he's, you know, at, at their church, they're recording their services. And he is um, able to walk around now and even starting to let his cane go. And so we give God the thanks yes, for that. Thank you, and then our God's a healer. Yes, he Amen. Is. So if you're home right now and you are just sick from whatever that is ailing you, Sister Peyton, uh, broken thumb, others that are sick, uh, yes, we want to just Jesus. pray for everybody. And if you have a special need, call that need out before the Lord. Let's believe God that he's going to touch all these. So let's go to the Lord right now in prayer and pray for healing. Uh, in the church. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, God, God, that you are our healer. Yes, Lord, Lord, we look to you at this time, God, that you will touch Lord, each and every one God. of us. Praise Lord, we pray, God, God that uh, we yes, praise you, Lord, for Brother Black. God, that you would touch his body. Lord, we believe in you, God, right now in your mighty name. God, that you are going to touch and heal those, Lord, in their homes. Lord, all those with the coronavirus, God, we're praying for divine healing. My Lord, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, that you are just moving, Lord, in every home, every hand that was raised. I pray, God, that you meet that need right now. In the name of Jesus, be with all of our workers, God, all the medical workers, God, we pray, and doctors, God, we just pray for your healing, uh, Lord, a sovereign power to move throughout this land. And we're going to give you the praise for it and give you the glory. In the lovely name of Jesus, we pray. 
Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We again want to also remind you about uh, your giving. Uh, please continue to be faithful uh, to the Lord in the giving of your tithes and offerings. This Sunday is Mission Sunday, right. and we want to, again, uh, you know, our missionaries, they're being impacted by this, just like the rest of the world, and so if you are still able to, to uh, honor your pledge and to give, then we ask that you would please continue to give. Uh, you can give online, or you can mail, uh, which is just go to our website, pentcc.com and P-E-N-T-C-C dot com and there's online giving you can give you specify how much goes to missions how much goes to uh, general offerings and tithes and then as well as you can mail it in to us here at 5408 Sybil S-Y-B-I-L Court and that is 32309 or if you want to just swing by and drop it off and uh, that would be that would be wonderful too. Just maybe if you could uh, call us, and let us know. But what time you're coming? If not, then just stick it there under our front mat or somewhere there on the porch, and let us know uh, later. Leave us a message. If you have any prayer requests, if you have any uh, situations where you really need to, to talk to us, call the church at eight five zero eight seven seven two two eight seven. And simply just leave a message, and uh, we'll get back to you as, as soon as possible. As soon as we get the message, we will call you right back. And so that's different ways that you can get a hold of us, as well as if you want to text us or whatever. We will respond to everything at this time. I wanted to mention, in lieu of us having Sunday school for our young people, <clears throat> brother and sister Chris uh, Payton are doing an excellent job, and they are emailing out lessons <clears throat> to to you uh, so if you want to uh, if you don't have their email address let them know you want it if you're not already been touched uh, contacted by them but I believe that they've reached everybody and they're sending out lessons and links that you can have lessons that you can have your kids sit down there at the computer and that they can do these assignments that will keep them connected as well and while we're doing this and while we're having uh, church here right now you need to say amen. You need, you need to feel the presence of God right. in your home. You need to clap your hands when we clap our hands. And, right. and raise your hands when we raise your hands. And make it just like you are right in church as well. Amen. And so uh, do the same thing with your children, your family. Let's, let's, let's encourage each other to worship. This coming Tuesday is ladies' prayer, but we're doing something different. We're going to have it here at the Huba Home and also via live uh, Facebook Live. And so uh, we are um, you know, limiting the number of people. Uh, if you want to come and here to our home, we're limited to nine people. And so um, and we have cleaning supplies here and everything. When you come in, we will want you to uh, be sanitized and then upon leaving, and then, uh, but that will be at 6.30 here at our residence. Ladies, if you want to come, you can feel free to do so, but we have to stop it at 9. So it might be best for you to call ahead, let Sister Huba know you're coming, and so we will reserve a spot for you. Amen. And then Wednesday night, again, is Bible study at 7.30 via Facebook. And we're all doing all this Facebook Live, as well as after the service, uh, we will then be posting it on YouTube, which will probably be a couple hours right after the service we will try to upload it as soon as possible that you can watch it on face i mean rather on youtube uh, uh on our, our our website which is there with our channel rather that is on youtube which is simply the pentecostals of the capital city and so there's only one of us there so uh, you should we should and it should pop right up there you may have to scroll a little bit through there to find the date i'm going by the date and then uh, the name of the the sermon and so you can just simply look for the date, and it should it should be right close to the very top of the list. And so uh, we'll be working to get YouTube uh, live as well as Facebook live. But for right now, we're still uploading it and doing that. Friday then will be youth service. Let me hear it, young people. <laughs> All right, and that will be uh, Friday uh, at seven, and that's going to be via Instagram live. 
Instagram Live. So please keep that in mind. Praise yes, the Lord. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, we want to get into the Word of God. Yes, thank you. Praise God. And if you would turn to Judges chapter 14 and verse number 5. Judges uh, 14 and verse number 5, if you would turn there. And it reads here in Judges 14 and verse number 5. Mm -hmm. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. Right. Verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And he rent or ripped him as he would have rent a kid, or meaning a goat, a little small goat. Mm -hmm. And he had nothing in his hand, mm -hmm. but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Mm -hmm. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time, he returned to take her. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. Right. Mm -hmm. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. Right. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother. And he gave them and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey right. out of the carcass mm -hmm. of the lion. Oh, so his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast, for so used, uh, used the young men to do. Verse 11, And it came to pass when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. Uh -huh. Jump down to verse number 14. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong right. came forth sweetness. Yes. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. By the help of the Lord today, I want to just simply preach to our church and preach to those that are watching. I see some are out of state watching. We Praise welcome you as well. That's right. Glad that you're tuning in. But I like to preach on this, honey in a lion. All right. Honey in a lion. Mm -hmm. Amen. One more time, I want to pray over the word of God that God will help me and God will help us all as we hear the word of the Lord. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for your word. That's you, God, that you now will just anoint me and help me, Lord, to minister your word. I pray, oh God, that you would just, Lord, touch each and every heart, every ear that hears this broadcast, Lord, regardless if it's live or later on. God, I pray that you would just bless them, that your presence come into that home. And we praise you, Lord, for God, we thank you for it. Lord, do a work in our hearts and our lives. And we thank you, Jesus, for your glorious presence in our lives. In Jesus' lovely yes. name we pray. Hallelujah. And everybody say amen. amen. And I can't hear you. Everybody say amen. 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 All right. Praise the Lord. God bless you. you may be seated. Now everybody knows that a honey is, is made by bees. Amen. And those bees build this, what is known as a honeycomb. Right. Bees start making the honey, which is basically their food by visiting flowers. They collect this uh, sugary juice uh, called nectar from the blossom by sucking it out with their, their tongues. They store it in what's called their honey stomach, which is different from their food stomach. Okay. How they know the difference, I don't know, but that's what they do. <laughs> And when they have a full load of nectar, they fly back to the hive, and there they pass it 
through their mouths to other worker bees who chew it for about a half an hour and then it is passed from bee to bee until it is gradually turned in to honey. Then the bees will then store that honey in a honeycomb cell which is a six-sided uh, figure uh, which is like tiny jars that are made of wax. The honey is still a bit wet when they, when they put it into the honeycomb cell and so they will fan it with their wings to dry it out so it becomes more sticky. And when it's ready, then they seal the top of that cell with a wax lid right. to keep the honey from uh, be, uh, getting uh, dirty and keeps it clean. So that's how bees make honey. Amen. They don't make very much of it though. It is stated that it takes at least eight bees, eight of them, all of their life to make one single teaspoon of honey. Wow. So next time you go and you see, <laughs> uh, you see a big jar of, of honey, realize one teaspoon takes a whole lifetime doing that. Amen. One thing for sure, and that is honey, is known for its own distinct sweetness. Right. Amen. It doesn't taste like uh, uh, any of the other Splendas. No, it doesn't. It doesn't taste like Stavia or Stavia. There. And somewhere along the line, he failed to understand that his strength was really from the Lord. Come on. I'm glad to understand today something that Samson didn't understand, and that is that my strength cometh from the Lord. Right. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who right. strengthens me. Amen. It's not by my own power or not by my own my spirit, uh, spirit, but by the Spirit of the Lord that all these things, not by my might rather, but by His Spirit, right. saith Come the on. Lord. And so he didn't understand that, that it wasn't from Him, but it was from the Lord. Let me say that we will always get in trouble. Every one of us right. will get in trouble when we think more about our own personal strength yeah. than we think about God's strength. Come on. Let me tell you what, you may have some strong points in your life, but you're going to get in trouble when you begin to dwell more about you yeah. and how strong you are in comparison yeah. to how strong God is. we got to always remember that God's strength is a lot stronger than us. Right. We will always uh, look to the Lord for our strength, and we must always remember that he would be the one that gives us strength. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 11 mm -hmm. says this. Now all these things happen unto them for ensembles. Are we having trouble there with the camera? They just lost connection for a minute. Okay. You're good. Are we back on? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, back to what first Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 11. Now all these things happen unto them for ensembles, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come, the Lord. If we're going to do a work for God, and in this city, it's because God is going to be backing us up. Amen. Samson knew he was strong, and he failed to remember that it was only because of the Lord. Amen. As strong as, as Samson was, he did have a weakness. It was obviously, we all know the story, uh, women Amen. was his weakness. He wanted a wife, and uh, that's a good thing for a man to want a wife. Let me say that again. <laughs> for a man to want a woman to be his wife. That's, right. Amen. that's, that's right. the way God made it. That's right. Amen. And so that's good. But was, what wasn't good was where he looked Come on. Oh, that's right. for yes. that wife. No. Come on. No, no, no. The Bible says that Samson saw a woman 
in Timnath. Come on. And she was a Philistine. Amen. The Philistines were one of the worst enemies that were a constant thorn in the side of Israel. Amen. They killed many Israelites. And they oppressed them. Right. And they came and stole their harvest and right. their crops. Right. Not caring one bit whether Israel lived or died. No. Come on. Right. And so Philistines were a terrible nation to Israel. Amen. And we, we see that they created a lot of problems for, for Israel. And uh, of all places for Samson to look Come for on. a wife... It would be from Timnath, and there he found a woman that was a Philistinian. Mm -hmm. Judges chapter 14 and verse number 2 says, And he came and told his father and his mother, Amen. and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore get her for me to wife. Come on. But I want you to see what the parents said back to him. All right. Verse number three, Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? Come on. Or among all my people? Right. That thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Come Philistines? Come on. Wow, that is he was trying to reach his son right. and tell his son, you don't mess with fire, you're going to get burnt. Right. Right. This woman doesn't know the Lord. Right. This woman does not believe like we believe. And God has already told us that we're not to intermingle with these other religions and Come other on. faiths that, and other gods of this world, that we are to stay true to the one true God and to only to marry within our own brethren and amongst our Amen. Israelites because we all believe the true God is Jehovah. Right. And so he was trying to bring that out to his, is there nothing, what's wrong with all these beautiful ladies that are here among those of Israel? What's wrong with all the ones? Is there not one of them that is pleasing to you? And the Bible says that Samson said unto his father, get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. Mm. She pleases me. For the preservation of truth that this one God truth, that the Lord is the true God and that there is no other God beside That's Him. That's right. right. For the preservation of that precious truth, because we need to understand something, that our spouses can influence us. Amen. Amen. We know man is the head, but the wife is the neck that turns the head. Amen. And so uh, I think God understands that Men can be influenced by their wives. Amen. And so God instructed people to marry only those who believed right. in the Lord. Right. In the New Testament, this same principle is again reiterated to us in 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together right. with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. For what fellowship mm -hmm. Come on. hath Righteousness with unrighteousness. Right. And what communion hath light with darkness. Mm -hmm. And so we see that that principle was carried over into the New Testament. Mm -hmm. It should be carried over into our lives as well. Young men, young women, let me preach to you this morning. Come on. You better be careful who you date. Amen. Because who you date may become your mate. Amen. And that mate's going to influence your life. That's could be right. a blessing to you or could be a curse to you Amen. the rest of your That's life. Right. They better know the Lord. They need to have repented of their sins. Can I preach this to you this morning? Amen. They better be baptized in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Right. And they must have received the baptism right. of the Holy Ghost right. with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. If they've not been born again of water and spirit, don't touch the unclean thing. Stay away from Timnath. Don't go to those women. Come on, amen. But it didn't matter to Samson. She pleased him. Come on. And he wanted her right. when he saw her. 
Judges 14 and 5 tells us that Samson and his parents went to Timnath, and I believe his parents went reluctantly. Amen. How could they tell Samson, no, we're not going to do this? Uh, his size, and they knew his strength. They reluctantly went down to Timnath. And somewhere along that journey, as they were, were traveling to Timnath, his parents got separated from Samson. Maybe they were wearied and tired and Samson wanted to get there faster. So he left his parents and as they were all continuing down to Timnath. And as Samson was on the way, a lion roared and the Bible says came upon him. Amen. There are few things more intimidating than the roar of a lion. That's the truth. The roar of a lion gets your attention, doesn't oh, it? Oh, amen. <laughs> the roar of a lion is life threatening. Amen. It is an announcement to all of us that danger is present. Amen. Mm -hmm. The lion is a king of the jungle, fierce. Loud teeth that are bared, claws that are sharp, ready to pounce on its prey, Amen. ready to destroy and to eat and to, to, uh, to kill. Infinitely powerful a lion is, striking fear in everyone. Yes. I'm talking about lions. Right. Amen. Come on. Something that you don't want to meet no. in the wrong location. Amen. When you go to a zoo, one of the top attractions in a zoo is a lion. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, I don't mind looking at lions <laughs> as long as there are steel, steel bars between right. me and them. Amen. Then I don't mind, and even then I'm still going to stay a distance back. Amen. I don't want to get anywhere inside of that cage. You know, you probably seen this, heard the stories about the worker that fell into a lion's cage, and it was just him and that lion in there. And well, I don't want to. That's why I don't work at a zoo. <laughs> I don't want to get on the same side of a bar with a lion. Amen. Amen. If they're caged up and we're at a safe distance, then I, I'll, I'll do that. But let me throw this in here while, while I'm talking about lions uh, 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 coming upon you as you're down, going down the Timnath. Uh, when you go to the devil's side of town, Come don't on. be surprised if you get attacked while you're getting there. Come on, oh, that's right. yes. Come on. Good preacher. There's some places you ought not to go, folks. Right. Come on. Because there's a lion on the way that that's was right. waiting to, to pounce that's upon it. you Amen. and to destroy your life. So upon this threat, the Spirit of God moves upon Samson like he did at the other times. Amen. Samson literally with his bare hands grabs that lion and he rips that lion apart like he would just a little small goat. Just, just tear it apart, delicate, just, just easy. And uh, no knife was needed. He literally tore that lion Apart. Amen. God moved into that situation for Samson and uh, did what was needed when he needed it. God moved when Samson needed it yes. and did what he needed it. That's right. God always has a remedy. Yes, he does. God always has a cure mm -hmm. for the lion's. That threaten our lives. That's it. But that remedy, it's interesting, doesn't reveal itself until the lion is roaring. Right. Amen. It's the roar of the lion mm -hmm. that puts God into action. Amen. And he did what he needed when he needed it. Come on. Same it is in your life when the lions roar. God will do what is needed yeah. for your life right. when it is needed. Right. Praise God. God has a remedy. Yes. God has the cure for all of our lives. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
when the lions attacked, God began to move upon Samson. Hallelujah. Amen. When the lions attack your life is when the Holy Ghost begins to move upon each and every one of us. And even though we're being threatened right now in our lives, I want you to know God's presence is with us. Yes. Thank and God is moving yeah. on our behalf. Yeah. Amen. Thank the you, Spirit Lord. of God was already upon Samson. I want right. you to understand that. Right. But it was only the roar, the trial, the dangerous right. situation that brought about that awesome presence of Come God's on. power and His presence. Hallelujah. Glory. And so now we, we, we have gone to this point in the story that got us to this place. Now I want to focus on our opening text of verses 8 and 9 to see what happened in the course of time. Mm -hmm. Judges 14 and verse 8. Let's go back there now and let's look what happened with a little bit of time here. It says, And after a time he, Samson, returned to take her and he turned aside to see as he went back to Timnath he turned aside to see the carcass of that lion now. And he said, it says there, behold, there was a swarm of bees right. and honey that was in the carcass or the body right. of that lion. Amen. And so he went to that lion and probably knelt down to it. And he stuck his hand into that uh, honeycomb that was built there by that swarm of bees mm -hmm. and it says that he took honey from the carcass of that lion and he ate that with his hands and went on eating then he came to his mother and father possibly on the return back and brought them that same honey but he didn't tell them where he got the honey from he just gave it to them, and uh, he shared that honey that he got Amen. from the lion that he had killed previously. Huh. Out of the lion that he had slain, mm -hmm. a single bee flew, probably into the chest cavity, and he found the place in its chest cavity to start a honeycomb. Amen. Then more bees came, and however they communicated, more came, until a supply of honey was made there. As they built that honeycomb, and they put honey into that honeycomb. And now we see Samson with his own hands taking honey out of that and beginning to eat that honey. Mm -hmm. Amen. The lion that wanted him for lunch became lunch for him. Amen. Ooh. Come on. Uh, wow. I hope you all follow me on that's this, folks. Amen. That which was to destroy him turned out to be a blessing. Right. Amen. That's Come it. on. Yeah. That yeah. would strengthen him. That's it. Amen. And refresh him. That's it. And renew him. That's right. Hallelujah. That's good. Preaching. Not only was it a blessing to Samson. Right. But Samson gave it to others, yeah. Amen. Amen. to his parents, and they too enjoyed the blessings of the honey, amen, that came from the lion. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The one who was wanting to eat Samson for lunch yes. became now Samson's lunch and many other people's lunch. Amen. Not only was it a blessing to Samson, but he gave it to his parents. They ate it. And Samson said this, out of the strong came forth sweetness. Right. Come on. Wow. Who'd ever thought honey could be found in a lion? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> that sweetness, that sweetness would come out of what would normally be considered a terrible situation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sweetness found in a terrible situation. All right. That honey in a lion blessed him and it blessed others. Right. And here's what came to me when I came across that scripture. 
I, I saw a message in that. That lion that was trying to destroy him yes. ended up becoming a blessing to right. him Amen. and a blessing to That's others. It. That's it. And I began to get God began to speak to me and said, I want you to preach on that. Right. Amen. Because that's where we're at today. Today we are daily uh, squaring off against lions. Whether it's an issue, a, a controversial issue in our lives. Maybe it is a sickness. Maybe it is a bad relationship. A relationship that has gone sour. Maybe it is some kind of reoccurring temptation. And that has just as much of is just as much of a man eater as if it had sharp teeth and a nerve shaking roar. We're facing these kind of lions daily in our lives. Right. They they confront us and they and roar. Then. Even our world is facing a roaring lion right now, and it is called. The coronavirus. Come on. It is not a physical lion, right. but it is this unseen lion That's right. Right. that uh -huh. is destroying, that is roaring. It's right. got everybody intimidated. Come it's on. got everybody shaking in their boots. Right. Right. They got everybody prepared, washing their hands right. 25,000 times a day. <laughs> Amen. Or every two seconds we're washing our hands. Oh. It's a threat to all. Right. Amen. It's called the coronavirus, the, the, the Wuhan virus, the Chinese virus. It's that virus that out there it is. Amen. It has literally stopped our nation Come in on. its tracks. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mercy. Our very survival as a nation Come on. is at stake. Right. Maybe because so many have fallen in love with the world. Come on. Jesus. Come on. God's people have fallen in love with a girl from Timnath. That's right. Jesus. Fallen in love with the world instead of with God. Amen. And now maybe Satan is taking advantage of it. That's right. As we look around this world. We, which started out to be a God-fearing Christian nation, the numbers are very revealing how many are still church-going Christians Come on. that worship the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, as we look at the world today, too many are flirting around Help us, God. Well, with the daughters of Philistines. Amen. 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 They're flirting around with the Hollywood celebrities. Amen. They're flirting around with the women on the media. They're flirting around with people that they should not be flirting around with uh -huh. and involved in practices that they should not be practicing. Amen. Uh -huh. And I hate to tell you this, but there's too many out there in the world that are going to the wrong side of the city. Come on, amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well. Think about it. Yes. Preach it. Judges 14 and 1 says this, And Samson went down to Timnath right. and saw, saw a woman. Mm. Come on. Uh -oh. He saw a woman. Uh -oh. You better be careful at what in the world yeah. you're looking at. Uh -huh. How many of us end up in dangerous, life-threatening, mm -hmm. faith-threatening, Family threatening, lion field moments. Come on. Simply because we've been looking at what pleases the flesh. Help Amen. Us, help Come on. Us, help us Come on. Let me tell you, everything that looks good in the world may not necessarily be good for That's you. That's right. That's the truth. Just because a job looks good Come on. doesn't mean that it always is. Right. Just because a friendship with somebody at work looks good Amen. Come on. doesn't always mean that it is in life. No. Come on. It actually could be death staring you in the face. Amen. Our eyes can lead us into trouble. That is why as children of the King, we are to be people who do not walk by sight. 
But we are to walk by faith. We are to live by faith. And we are to guard our eyes, amen, looking at things that will take us away, amen, into a place called Timnath, a place where we should be going, amen. We are required by God that we are to walk by faith. Our looking can take us right into a face-to-face -face encounter with a lion. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So be careful, yes. saying of God. That's it. Most of the lions we face could be avoided if we could just get our focus off of Timnath. That's right. Get our focus and our eyes off of the world. Right. And simply get our eyes on Jesus. That's right. Keep our focus, Keep focus. on Jesus. That's right. Get my eyes off the pleasures right. of sin. Amen. And get my eyes focused back on Jesus. Amen. You'll avoid a whole lot of lions right. if you'll do that. Amen. And so what is our remedy then to the lions? How do we survive these lions that I've mentioned of life? Well, I'll tell you how. And in verse number 6, it reveals to us the key. It says this in Judges 14 and 6, And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Amen. <laughs> That's the key right there. Come on. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. When confronted by the lions of life, I would like to submit to you that we need to allow the come Spirit on. of the Lord yes. to mightily come upon each one of us. Amen. In other words, what I need is a good old injection, a good old, amen, dose of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. When the lions of life come into our lives. Let me say, we're not going to defeat Corona on our own. We're not going to defeat all the other lions, sickness, and, and all the difficult situations of life on our own power. Right. What we need is a sovereign moving of the Holy Ghost to come upon us. Hallelujah. God's Spirit needs to come upon us and save us from the roar of the lions of our lives. Amen. Oh, how we need today, church, God's anointing more than we've ever had it before. What we need more than ever, uh, church, I want to say, is we need God's power in our lives more than ever before. Praise God. We need Him to fill our lives each step of the way. We need them to reach out to God and call upon Him. Pray like we've never prayed before. When the lions are roaring, that's when you and I need to pray, church. That's when we need to get a hold of God. That's when we need His anointing to come upon us. Amen. Praise God. I can't do this on my own. I need Jesus to help me. I need the power of the Holy Ghost to help me to live right and do right and to stay on that right path. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. What all of us need is the Holy Ghost to get a hold of us. To come upon us. For a house, amen. You need to begin to just speak in tongues and to praise God and to worship God. And then to get renewing of the Holy Ghost. We can't be in church right now other than through online. But you can have the same power of God come upon you in your house. Amen. You need to let the Spirit of the Lord mightily come upon you. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Come on, let's praise God right now. I feel God in this place. Oh, Lord, we worship you. We praise you, Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Amen. We're, we're singing about miracles and we preach about miracles. Amen. Amen. We sing about and we uh, preach about how that God is a way maker. Yes. Amen. Well, you know what? Now we actually got to start living what That's we're singing. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sure. When you're sick with some sickness in bed and your loved ones can't see you come and on. no one can come around you, That's amen, right. you better start practicing oh. With all the songs we sing about, we sing how he's a miracle worker. Amen. But there's a difference in singing about it 
and actually living in your oh, life and, and practicing it in your life Come and on. doing it. And that's where God's got the church right now. We're, we're living our faith. Amen. We're, we're living for God without a church building to go to. We're living for God even though I don't have a pastor to come and pat me on the back or, and a Sunday school teacher to encourage me. We're living for God and we're experiencing miracles. Amen. Because the Lord is the one that's doing it. Amen. Not a building. Praise God. Now we actually have to pray to Him. Right. Come on. We actually have to turn to Him it. and live it out in more than just a song That's it. and a sermon. Oh, Amen. Praise God. First Peter 5 and 8 says, uh -huh. Be sober, uh -huh. be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, right. as a roaring, as a roaring, yeah. your adversary, the devil, as a roaring That's lion, right. walketh about seeking whom he may Devour. Come on, amen. We need God to move and to come upon every one of us right now. We yes. need God to help us because the lion is roaring in our lives. Amen. And we need God, amen, to intervene and move upon us to give us the power that we need. Why don't you pray right now? Let's pray right now for the power of God to come upon us. Lord your mighty name, Jesus. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon every one God of us, every one that's watching God, every child of God. Let your spirit move upon us, those that are afflicted, those that are under attack of the roaring lion. Let your spirit come upon us. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, oh God, move upon us, Lord. We need you, Jesus. We need you. Can we give Him praise right now? Can we give Him glory? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I will not be devoured by the fear of the roar. That's right. Holy Ghost is going to come upon me. Yes, And God's going to do the same for you. Come on. Amen. Don't be intimidated by Don't the roar that this it. world is running from. Right. They're going around acting like, amen, we all got leprosy. Yeah. Don't you be afraid That's of right. the roar uh -oh. of the lion. Oh, oh, praise God. Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. I truly believe when God gets done Come on. working through Samson, and when God did get done working through Samson, right. uh -huh. the destroyer was destroyed. Oh, oh amen. Love it. Love it. The predator became the prey. Right. The roaring became the silent. Come on. And out of the strong came oh. sweetness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you liking that, Brother Willie, huh? Yes, sir. Man. I believe when God gets done with this coronavirus, right. this lion that we're facing right now, there's going to be sweetness come out of the strong. Hallelujah. God's going to have some honey come out of all of this. Oh, praise God. I believe that we're going to look back and be able to see sweetness that God gives. People that haven't been to church in a long time now, they're going to start coming back to church because now they really miss church because they didn't. They weren't coming when they were so easy to go there, so accessible to go there. But now that they're being told, no, you can't go, there's something that God's working in their hearts that, amen, there's some honey that God's building in their hearts and saying, oh, I can't wait. To, I'm going to be one of the very first ones back into those doors when that church opens up. Oh, hallelujah. Those who feel like <clears throat> they can do it on their own, there's some honey going on because they're realizing that they can't be totally self-reliant in life. Amen. Come on. When they're laid off of their jobs oh. that they put so much trust in, oh. and then they put so much faith in that yeah. job, oh. and all of a sudden they receive a pink slip and they've been laid off, they're going to be humbled and they're going to be starting to call again on the name of the Lord uh -huh. for strength and for His provisions during this time. Amen. Amen. We're going to hear testimonies after testimonies. Right. Amen. Of the Lord's miraculous healing power. Amen. Yes. People like here, Pastor Jerry and Sister Teresa Miranda. These are apostolic people. Mm -hmm. He is a pastor and this is a pastor's wife. 
Okay. Amen. They're in Salem, Oregon. Amen. It's been more than two weeks since Brother Jerry and Sister Teresa Miranda have held hands, oh. have hugged, or even been in the same room. But on Thursday afternoon, the couple of 38 years being married celebrated a tearful reunion outside of the Salem Hospital as Teresa, who is 56, was cleared to return home after having a serious case of COVID-19. Hey, folks, that's honey in a line. I can tell you about evangelist Eli Hernandez. He is an evangelist that comes out of Las Vegas. He got infected with the coronavirus from traveling from city to city and preaching across America. Somewhere he picked it up. Amen. He became very, very sick. And actually the church where he contracted it at, many were also inflicted. And we see here that he was very sick and it did not look like he was going to make it. And so he now, with time and prayer, he has miraculously been healed in the lovely name of Jesus by the power, the healing power of the name of Jesus reunited with his wife and his family once again. And then here's even another, amen, honey in a line that strikes more home to me and to the Huba family. Sister Maricar Martinez. That's this young lady right here. And I hope she's watching. I called you young lady. Amen. That is sitting right next to Brother Jericho. Amen. Brother Jericho's mother. Amen. She became very sick. They live in Bayonne, New Jersey, which is just, just across the river from New York City. And she became very, very sick with a high fever and a congestion. And uh, she took herself and she su shut herself up in her, her bedroom. She would not allow Brother Jericho or his sister to come in. Nobody was allowed to come in there but herself. And she stayed in there for, I believe it was over a week. We were praying here in the Huba family, yeah. the household. I know that especially Sister Charity <laughs> was praying for her future mother-in-law as well. But I am here to tell you another, amen, Thanks. bit of honey in a lion. Sister Maricar is healed. She's back up again. She's cleaning her house and disinfecting her house and she's doing well. And we thank God for that. Yeah. Hey, folks, it's getting sweeter all the time. Yeah. I'm seeing now more and more a lot of honey that is going to come out of this. Testimony after testimony of yeah. the healing power come on, that's of the right. name of yeah. Jesus. When God's people pray, we all will be glad when they say unto us, mm -hmm. if there's any honey in this, Amen. Let me point this one out. I think every one of us here, all of us watching, wherever we are, amen, I think it, a bit of honey that's going to come out of this is that's that right. we're all going to be able to say, I was glad when, when it said unto <laughs> me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but it ain't going to get any sweeter than that. And they finally say, okay, everybody can start meeting again. Y'all can have church. That's going to be sweet, sweet, sweet for the whole church. And we're going to be very, very glad. Amen. As we're eating all that honey, praise God, that came in a lion. I believe in that after all this has passed. We're going to see revival like never before. And that's going to be the honey that's going to come out of this lion, this roaring lion. We're going to see revival. Amen. This, this pandemic is causing all the world to realize that we cannot fix everything on our own. No, we can't. Absolutely not. I think all the world knows we need God to move on us. All the world <clears throat> needs God at this time. Yeah. Amen. Um, Backsliders across Tallahassee. In the name of Jesus. They are waking up. 
Come on. Amen. That God has never left them. They may have left the God and slid back from this glorious truth, but they're waking up, church. I think we're going to see the lukewarm starting to pray like they've never prayed before. Going from that lukewarm to that hot. Amen. Praise God. Hot before the Lord. Amen. The self-reliant are now humbling down and realizing that they too need a Savior. This miraculous power of Jesus. And now I have our music come at this time. The miraculous healing power of Jesus. It is being broadcast via Facebook, via other ways. The healing power of Jesus. Literally on Fox News, I see them talking about the Lord. Mm -hmm. That is syndicated everywhere. I believe we're seeing this being broadcast across the nation. The sweet glory of God. Mm -hmm. The sweet glory of God is being witnessed worldwide. Yes. So I close with this. I believe honey. Everybody say honey. 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 I believe honey is going to come forth from all the lions that are roaring right now. Yeah, Can you hear the roar? Yeah. Pretty intimidating. Some people are getting really nervous. It's just a roar of a lion. The difference between us and the world is the church we are born again. We have the Holy Ghost. The power, the presence, the spirit of the living God that is in us. No matter what lion comes to you in life, this coronavirus will come and it will go. But I guarantee you the devil will bring about another one. Life will bring about something else. And I want you to understand regardless of the lion that comes against us as it roars to us, you got to realize God's in us. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Sweetness will come forth from the strong. Oh, what you need to do is, oh, taste and see <laughs> that the Lord is good. Oh, yes, the Lord is good. A lot of great, beautiful, sweet things, sweet, are going to come out of this that has happened to us. Hallelujah. So let me say to you today, if you've been heading towards the world, if you've drifted or you've gotten off that straight and narrow, and you are going down that broad way, yeah. it's time for you to turn around. Amen. It's time for you to come on back home. Amen. Amen. To a church that loves you yeah. and to a Savior that's been waiting on you Amen. to come back home where you belong. Yeah. Jesus is coming soon, yeah. church. Yes, All of us that are watching, Jesus is coming soon. This is just the beginning of sorrows. Wow. It's time to get right with God and then to make sure your salvation is sure in your life Amen. that you are ready for the Lord. Amen. The sweetness of Jesus is being, tasting, is being tasted by all of us. Amen. As the lions roar in the days ahead, you just, you just let the Holy Ghost come upon you. Amen. When you are getting anxious, let the Holy Ghost come upon you. If you're getting nervous, lift up your hands towards heaven and begin to worship God and let the power of God come upon you. Amen. Like Samson of old, amen. When the lion roars, let the Spirit of the Lord mightily come upon you. Amen. Because then you're going to be able to, to kneel down while you're kneeled down there in prayer. You'll be able to draw out sweetness from that lion that was roaring against you. Let's sing this chorus. Amen. Before we dismiss in prayer. He's sweet I know. Sweet I know. Will you sing with us?
lift our hands and worship Him. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you, Jesus. God, I'm so thankful that you can bring honey from a lion. Oh, I worship you, Lord. I praise you. Lord, let your sweetness, God, come forth from all the things, things that confront us in the days of the of our lives. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we, we give you praise that you can take a dangerous, destructive situation and that, God, you can bring forth sweetness out of the strong. Oh, Lord, I pray through all of this that we're going through as a nation and as a world, God, that your name would be glorified. That millions upon millions will speak of your miraculous works among men that we will boast and brag about our God amen who provided a way of escape and made a way for us and that is a miracle worker in our lives oh Lord we thank you for the sweetness of your spirit Lord that even amidst all of these sour and all of these bad situations God, that your spirit can bring sweetness through it all. Amen. Let your sweetness, God, dwell in us through the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, keep your hand upon each and every one of us until we meet again. Amen. And we'll be sure to give you the praise and give you the glory. In the lovely name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And everybody say amen. amen. Everybody say amen. amen. And so, ladies, again, let me remind you, 6.30 Tuesday, tune in Facebook for Ladies' Prayer. Wednesday, 7.30, Facebook for Wednesday night midweek service. Amen. God is doing great things in our lives. I feel His presence, and I know you do too, in your place of worship there in your home. God bless you until we meet again. Don't forget, call our church if you have any needs. Sister Hugh and I and the church will do what we can to serve you. God bless you in Jesus' name.